So let's have a look at the first one, which is cardiovascular disease. So in my experience, my grandfather had two heart attacks. He survived them, obviously, um, and was the, in the end, it was his bowel cancer that got him. First of all, it, surgery wasn't quite as advanced as it is now. And uh, also the culture was you had bacon and eggs for breakfast pretty much every day. So that didn't help with the cholesterol, which is one of the major causes of, of um, cardiovascular disease. In fact, I'm currently on a keto diet, and that raises my cholesterol because you eat a lot of fat and things like that. Um, it's low in carbs, but it's high in fat, and that's raised my cholesterol level. And uh, the doctor asked me if I wanted to go on um, cholesterol-reducing medicine, and I said, look, give it another six months. It's the benefits of losing weight at the moment outweigh the, the benefits of getting my cholesterol down. So um, I'll give it another six months and I'll go on that medicine if I need it. But by then I should have changed my diet somewhat um, to maintain the weight loss and still um, still reduce the cholesterol as well, hopefully. So, yep. And then everyone should consider that. You, know, you, should, you should make use of the facilities available to you. I'm going to a, uh, a dietitian next week too to figure that out. Have you had anyone in your life uh, had heart disease, mate? Me? Uh, yeah. I remember my step-granddad. Well, he was my granddad, but he'd married uh, Nan after she was originally married. So he was step-granddad, but I'd always known him as my granddad. So he died of a heart attack when I was, I believe, six or seven. Um, but other than that, my All family... Right. No, it doesn't really have a lot of heart disease problems. Um, I mean, Grandma did end up dying when she was about, oh, God, nearly 80 from a heart attack. Actually, she just passed away in, in, while she was asleep. So, I mean, and again, loved the fatty foods and things like that. But it wasn't really a problem throughout her adult life, no. So, I mean, it, it's not really a problem in my family. But as you said, the, and I'm the only one with the diabetes in my family too, so I've got to be careful with that. Um, but other than that, not a great deal, no. Oh, Dr. Chuck, who is uh, under the name Tornagorn, says he had a heart attack in uh, 2013, age 49. So, and he's a doctor. There you go. So, yeah, he knows better. So, he, yeah. it's uh, there is a genetic component, obviously. But uh, as he said also in earlier up, this heart disease is caused by smoking, uh, high blood pressure, and diabetes. So, uh, you, you yourself should uh, cipher should. Uh, consider that as well i've yeah i actually saw my doctor yesterday and i've got bloods ordered for everything and generally i'm pretty good like my hba1c is, is generally fairly good uh, and there was one period where it was you know higher up there but i've gotten that down in the last few months so, like my health is generally pretty good despite the fact that um as a kid i i, I suffered i wasn't diagnosed until i was nearly 11 but i had it for about two years before that so I, I suffer a lot of joint problems from it now and things like that. But yeah, I my, generally, my, other than that sort of thing, I try to keep fairly healthy, I suppose. Yeah. Try. Well, we all try. We often <laughs> fail, though. <laughs> all right. So, yeah, please listen to Torna Gorn when he comments in the uh, chat because he's a doctor. Uh, don't listen to us. We're just uh, Absolutely. Who, who are having health issues. So, yeah. Um, we, we've got a video about cardiovascular disease. So sure we can is. play that now. You've probably heard in the news about the increase in heart disease and how now people have a higher blood pressure than ever before. But what does this actually mean? Yeah, I can't hear that. Why is this happening? Yeah, and no, what can we do to treat point. it? Well, you're going to learn just that in this video. But that's just on the gypsy. Yeah. Let's start with the yeah, coronary heart the disease, or CHD in short. Yeah, good. It's, it's when fatty deposits stream. build up in your coronary arteries, aka very important arteries, making them narrower and therefore reducing blood flow to the heart muscle. This is bad news. Less blood flow means less oxygen to the heart's muscles, so less aerobic respiration. This means that the poor heart has to work extra hard to get energy. What makes this bad situation even worse is high blood pressure. High blood pressure puts extra pressure on the arteries' walls, making them even more susceptible to narrowing. This happens because if your blood pressure is too high, the muscles in the artery need to respond by pushing back harder and so they become more muscular and so there is less space for the blood to flow through. Combined with the coronary heart disease, this can lead to heart attacks or worse, death. But why does Oops, this happen? The video. Oh, well, no. there are a number of factors, including age, smoking, 
diet, and physical activity. The older you are and the more you smoke, the higher the chances. Diet and physical activity also have a big effect on blood pressure, as well as cholesterol and weight, all of which are risk factors of coronary heart disease. So how are these problems fixed? Cypher, they're saying to that they can hear me. To keep arteries open, stents can be used. They're inserted by something called a catheter, a thin, flexible, long tube. It's fed through an artery until it reaches the blocked section. A small balloon inside the stent is inflated, pushing the plaque and fatty deposits against the artery wall. The stent is a metal cage, which then holds the artery open. This allows more blood to flow through. The catheter is then removed, leaving the stent in place. Although stents are very useful, they do come with some risks. Statins are a pill used to lower cholesterol. They work in two ways. Firstly, by slowing down the production of cholesterol by the liver, reducing the amount of bad LDL cholesterol circulating the blood. They also stabilize and slow down the rate of fatty deposits in the arteries. In fact, they're the most commonly prescribed drug in the UK and second most in the US. Statins reduce the risk of developing CHD and minimizes its effect, but again, there are possible side effects. These serious side effects are very rare, less than one in 10,000. So we've seen stents and statins. We can also replace faulty valves. The job of heart valves is to prevent the black flow of blood. Sometimes one or more of these valves stop doing its job properly. And when this happens, many people need little or no treatment, but sometimes surgery is needed. Surgery can either repair a valve or be a full valve replacement. Replacement valves can be man-made or from a donor. Did you know that donor valves can come from either a human or an animal? These biological replacement valves may be preferred as they don't damage red blood cells, but are also known to harden and need replacing every 10 to 20 years. Mechanical are a lot more durable, but patients have to constantly take anti-blood clotting drugs and some even say they can hear their own valves. If someone's heart is seriously damaged, they'll need a new one. This is known as a transplant. This is done by removing their heart and connecting the new one to the aorta and the pulmonary artery. Can you spot the potential problem in this process? Pause the video and have a think. While surgery is going on, the patient won't have a heart. This is solved by connecting the patient to a heart-lung bypass machine, which takes over the job of the heart and lungs. Because it's major surgery, there are some risks. So there we have heart disease, the treatments and their risks. If you liked the video, give it a thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe. Comment below if you have any questions. Why not check out our there. Fusco app as well? Until next Yeah, so there's lots of um, information there. If you've never really looked into it before, you'll um, get a lot of information from that. Um, this is going to be a very dry live stream because this is a fairly dry topic. It was funny. It was hard to find funny videos about these sorts of things. But um, but it's, I hope if in replacement for, of that, you'll find it's very informative. Um, there was a lot of things there that, uh, like, I didn't know that you could use a pig's valve, that kind of thing. Uh, well, an animal valve. It's usually a pig because that's what I've heard of before. It reminded me. Um, and yes, yeah, stents, these are all things you probably want to try and avoid, uh, you know, by eating healthy and keeping your cholesterol down and that kind of thing. Um, and that's why, I've, you know, I've given myself six months to lose some weight so that, and I don't really need to go on the, and change my diet. So I don't need to go on the cholesterol, um, medication. So you're you know, trying to get, and, sorry, I was yeah, gonna coming, say, so you, trying to get down to do five or 600 kilograms. Yeah. Yep. Yep. From a mountain to a yeah, small hill. Yes. Yes, yeah. <laughs> yes, the erosion's not fast enough, so. <laughs> yeah, so um, cardiovascular affects everyone. It doesn't have to be just men. Uh, men tend to get it a lot more, I guess, uh, as we saw from those figures earlier on, uh, simply because of the lifestyle that men live uh, in comparison, really, I, th I suspect. I think a lot more men smoked, as we saw from the lung cancer mm -hmm. figures. Um, and we're more likely to eat fatty foods and things like that. So uh, this is all preventable. Oh, someone said they had a heart attack at 40. Wow, that's quite young. Um, yeah, so it's all preventable, and hopefully we're also going to give some information about that. Um, 
related to cardiovascular is having a stroke. And my grandfather, the other grandfather, the dentist, he had strokes from age 35. Now, he was a heavy smoker and a heavy drinker. Um, and it paralyzed one side of his body, but he was still able to practice as a dentist, which was quite amazing. Uh, disabled people can be quite amazing and often are. And my grandfather was one of those. And, uh, but he was, a uh, he was, he was tall as I am now, but, but, um, he had a really deep voice, a lot deeper than mine. And because of his, uh, paralysis from the stroke, he, uh, was quite scary to a six year old boy as I was at that point. And he, he lose his temper when I couldn't understand him. So yeah, it, it not ha having a stroke is probably something you want to avoid. Uh, so in my history, I've got bowel cancer, I've got uh cardiovascular disease and i've got strokes now i've avoided the uh, heavy smoking and heavy drinking because i don't do either i don't smoke at all and i only have drinks for live streams really just to keep my voice lubricated <laughs> that's the excuse i'm using that's all right um yeah and uh so and i've lasted this long my dad again never smoked uh he drank a fair bit but he never had a heart attack whereas my grandfather did and uh, my dad always ate healthily he uh he swam several kilometers every day even you know close to the end so he's um you know he shows that you can do things about it and you can have a better life as a result um i got off the topic of having a stroke and we got a video about having a stroke just to tell you what it is and and what uh, you can do about it so if we can play that now sure we explain strokes and why acting fast is so important. This is Mike. Today he's visiting his grandfather. They are playing chess, but suddenly Mike notices something very strange. His grandfather can't speak properly and his face looks different. What is going on? Take action. Mike's grandfather might be having a stroke, also called a brain attack. Strokes are the second largest cause of death worldwide and also one of the largest causes of disability. They mainly happen in older people, but they can sometimes happen to younger people too. But what is a stroke? Our brain needs oxygen and nutrients, which it gets from our blood. When a stroke strikes, the blood can't get to where it needs to be. As a result, brain cells don't get enough oxygen and nutrients and become damaged or die. This can happen in one of two ways, either a blockage in the vessels that cut off the blood supply or bleeding in and around the brain. As we age, our arteries become harder and narrower and more likely to become blocked. However, medical conditions such as high blood pressure, atrial fibrillation, an irregular heartbeat in other words, or diabetes and lifestyle factors like smoking, drinking too much alcohol, and not exercising can increase the risk of having a stroke. As our brain controls the whole body, there are a great variety of different effects of stroke, depending on the area of the brain that is damaged. They can include difficulties with speaking, seeing or hearing, balance and coordination problems, muscle weakness, confusion or memory loss. All these symptoms can occur suddenly within minutes. So how can Mike check if his grandfather might be having a stroke? By using the FAST test. The F stands for facial weakness. Can the person smile? Has their face fallen on one side? The A for arm weakness. Can the person raise both arms and keep them there? The S means speech problems. Can the person speak clearly and understand what you're saying? Is their speech slurred? And the T stands for time. If you notice any of these signs, it's time to call an ambulance immediately even if the symptoms go away. The quicker a person gets to a specialist stroke unit, the quicker they will receive treatment, meaning more brain cells can be saved. Mike calls the ambulance right away. His grandfather gets the best treatment and makes a full recovery. And now they can play chess again, thanks to Mike and his fast response. Yeah, I didn't want to talk over the the video uh, cipher, but are you okay? I heard a crashing so noise. Oh no, that was just me feeding the cat. Yep, I'm fine. feeding the cat. Okay, good. The cat. <laughs> so I'm muted, so no one can hear that. 
All right. Uh, Wild Lord, uh, what do you think about that video? It's uh, You probably learned a few things about strokes there? Oh, yes, definitely. Definitely. What left out of you? Oh, I didn't know it I had something to do with the bloodstream. That's really cool. Yeah, it's um, it's something that uh, it's basically where the blood vessel in your head stops working, and uh, your bit of your brain doesn't get the uh, oxygen it needs to to function. So, um, Doctor Chuck is writing in the chat. Side note: Diabetes presents as elevated blood sugar levels, but the risks from diabetes are cardiovascular, i.e., heart attack, stroke, kidney problems, poor circulation of the feet, causing infection, ulcers. Uh, poor circulation can also result in amputation. Happened to my neighbour. Ooh, poor guy. Um, yeah, kidney problems can result in dialysis. And he liked that video, so that's good. So we're giving you good advice. I'd like to see that. <laughs> so have you had any experience with strokes as well? Uh, I, I have dealt with stroke patients when I've worked in nursing homes before. And yeah, yeah, basically, the part of the body does not... That's probably, I think, one of the more important. Yeah, you're, you're a little echoey. Yeah. It sounds like you're, the mic you think you're talking into isn't the mic that's active. There we go. That's better. That's better, yep. That's better, yep. Um, so, yeah, no, keeping an eye out for the, the facial uh, droop is, is, I think, one of the most important ones, uh, the speech especially as well, probably the two most important ones you could keep an eye out for. And, uh, as I said, I've dealt with a, a, a guy named Reggie who'd had a stroke. His right side was affected, so his hand was in a claw. Uh, you know, he couldn't move it. You, you could tell that his face was he You know, it, you'd help him... Put a, put a bib on, on him so he didn't dribble all over himself. It's, yeah, a horrible thing to go through. And, yeah, having only one half of your work afterwards must be horrible for some poor stroke victims. Yeah, and you can't really do anything about it once you've had it. Unfortunately, um, yeah. Yeah, you can prevent it in the first place by, you know, the usual things, so avoid smoking yep. and uh, eating healthily and, and that kind of thing, reducing cholesterol. So there's nothing left to do but cue the corgi. You're despicable.